In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. So, uh, I picked this up at church. This is a flyer, Six African Americans on the Way to Sainthood. And this is just such wonderful stuff. I need to go online and research more of these saints and what they really did for us and what they're doing right now for us in heaven. We've got Venerable Pierre Toussaint. Servant of God, Mary Elizabeth Lang. Venerable Henriette DeLille. I mean, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these correctly. Servant of God, Julia Greeley. Then we've got Venerable Augustus Tolton. He's led a very interesting life. I hope to learn more about him. And Servant of God, Thea Bowman, a woman who... I joined a, a convent and got a doctorate in English. Can you imagine this at times? This is just so, such wonderful and encouraging stuff, especially in our world right now. But other things, there's the church, St. Cyril Methodius. Remember I told you there's that Eastern Rite Diocesan Parish that I just love. I just love this parish. I can't always get there very well, very often. But as a being half Slovak, my heart is with this church. And the Eastern Rite Church that's diocesan is, is really wonderful. And if you can bring your children to this church, bring yourself to this church, even if you can't go full time, just every once in a while to appreciate that rite because it's older than the Latin Mass. And they don't really tell you when you walk in what, what it's totally about, the richness of the spirituality and the early church, really. I mean, it's most like the Mass that Our Lady and the Apostles would have been at. And it's like going back in time. They've got, they do the bells. Remember, in the Jewish Old Testament, the priests would wear bells so that you could hear them coming. And even not too long ago, priests would ring bells in the street. Like, to, to, to have catechism class, they'd ring a bell down the street. I don't know if they did it for... Blessed Sacrament. Remember, priests not that long ago would carry Blessed Sacrament right down Main Street. And everybody would reverence Blessed Sacrament. I mean, what is going on with our world today? Why don't we do that? You know, I've never seen like a priest ding a bell. I'm sure he'd probably get arrested. But you can't go down and ring a bell and call the children over for catechism class over on the baseball field. You know? I mean, it's sick, but you can sure do some crazy things in these state schools, and I can't mention them, or the videos will probably be coming down, because you can't oppose uh, sin anymore online. It's basically become unofficially illegal, right? Because you'll just be uh, canceled. But anyway, so... Uh, so this richness of this church, St. Cyril Methodius, and I want to get to the point right now, because I'm going off. They're looking for financing to build a new, a bigger church for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons, like at St. Joan of Arc down the street from here. They're not about that at St. Stroh Methodius. The problem is they're just so overcrowded in that tiny little church that it they have to have a bigger building and that's the right reason okay they're overcrowded and they simply cannot squish into the church and they need a bigger church that's a right reason to build a bigger church isn't it he's not father bill isn't looking to build some sort of multi-million dollar party room like father Sleva down the street so that people don't worship god He's doing the exact opposite. He's trying to build the faith. So if you know anyone who wants to donate to that or to help Father Bill in any way, please help. Whether you are in this area or way across the country, it does not matter. Father Bill will, he's, he likes to share his faith with everybody. He goes to Montana, he goes to North Idaho, he goes to, to Eastern Washington. He does that whole thing with, with the Eastern Rite Church. And I was telling you, the Eastern Rite Church is so rich in history, and and they should have a flyer in the front of the church that goes through everything that for first time people coming in, so that they can understand and appreciate this mass. 
Father Bill, he puts his hands up like this because that's what they did in the Old Testament. They didn't have the holy face. They didn't have our Lady Guadalupe Tilda. They didn't know. They didn't see the face of God. Remember, God the Father came as a burning bush. And so they think of God the Father as like incense or like a flame. And so they're like this because they want to invoke a closeness with our Lord, with the with the Holy Ghost and the God the Father, and it would be God the Son coming because they knew he was coming uh, through this light. And that's what Father Bill's doing when he does this. But if you don't get it and you don't look, it seems weird, right? You think, like, what is going on here? This is weird. But it's not weird. When you look in the history, it's beautiful. And when they walk around and they do their processions around the church, it's like in the Old Testament when they used to carry the Ark of the Covenant, when, when they used to be wandering the desert for 40 years. When they, but also when they took the scrolls, the priests had the scrolls and they'd walk around with the scrolls. And, that, and they, so they process around with the scripture, all of them. And if you don't know that history, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, the value doesn't make sense until you actually look into all this. And there's many more things. Remember, there's a, a wall they, in the Eastern Rite Church. They, they, the priest goes back behind the doors, and he's probably going in and out of the doors. Now, what is that? The Holy of Holies. They weren't allowed. Remember, the priest had to go back in the Holy of Holies. Now, in the in this new mass, or what would be become the mass, you know, after Christ died, they started doing the mass. It's it's showing the holy of holies, but it's open, so you can kind of see back. No, that makes sense, right? But if you don't know that, and you just see the priest going back and forth and stuff, it kind of doesn't make any sense. Well, what is he doing? What is this about? Well, it's showing that the curtain has been rent in two, but there's still they still acknowledge that it's coming from the Old Testament, but now we're in the New Covenant, so they have that wall there to symbolize that. This is such beautiful stuff, and I could go on and on with all the richness. I was just looking on their website, and they have the the cross with the with the you know they have the three, the, you know the Eastern Rite cross is different. It's got like the three lines on it, right, with the tilted. I never realized that tilted footrest symbolizes the good thief and the bad thief and the weighing of St. Michael's scale on the foot. The foot is the law, right? Jesus' feet, he stands on the rock of Calvary. He stands on the skull of Adam because that's where Adam died, right? But this is a beautiful thing. I never thought of it as a scale. You know, it's the scale of good and bad, of heaven and hell. These are such wonderful riches. I could go on and on. They do four fasts a year. This is awesome. This is awesome stuff. <laughs> maybe maybe if you want, maybe just become a parishioner there and start getting involved. They do have a small uh, gift shop. Don't shop on Sunday now. But you could go easily on Saturday and, and check it out and talk with Father Bill and see what what you can do there in their parish. Anything you do. I know he loves the poor. He's he's worries constantly about the poor. Uh, and he lets them attend services because he loves people. So I just encourage you. He's constantly talking about the Blessed Virgin in confessions and things. Don't be embarrassed or put off by the way the confessions are by the because remember back then the public confession was very much accepted and so you confess in the front of everybody but you kind of whisper to the priest and he puts a veil over you and this is part of that that coming from the public penances and public confessions that people used to do and it was normal back then and sometimes people still do it today and that's great that's why St. Patrick wrote his confessions. St. Augustine wrote his public confessions. Even I myself wrote uh, confessions. But anyway, so I encourage you to do that as well. What's the problem? Why can't people just confess? I mean, all of our sins are going to be made known. 
That's what our Lord said. You'll, all your sins will be written on your forehead. Everybody will know everybody's sins. Nothing, everything that is secret will come into the light, right? But uh, may God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.